we had these mopeds stored up here. We're pulling them down now. Damn. Now we pulled down the uh, the Jawa. Open up the cover here. We're trying to find out which one has the transistor in it so we can pull it out. So here we can see a uh, large transistor. I can't see the number, but obviously once he pulls it out of the bike, we're gonna take that back with me and we're gonna slap it on the um, on the analyzer. See, we got very proud that this is transistorized apparently. It, 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 emblazoned on the front label there and here is the coil that we have removed from that bike we could see that it is a uh, transimo uh looks like part number three zero six five hundred made in czechoslovakia it has on it a uh transistor a 2n3055 now i was told that this uh, bike has an intermittent ignition problem. Obviously, if there was no ignition, we could do a simple diode test, uh, rule out this transistor, see if it worked or not, and it wouldn't even be worth the movie. Uh, however, because uh, this ignition does work and it is intermittent, uh, using a diode test would probably show that the transistor does in fact work and it would not capture an intermittent problem with this transistor uh, given different conditions like once it heated up or whatnot what would happen uh, to the operation of this particular uh, semiconductor and this is very exciting because it gives us an opportunity to use the Heathkit semiconductor curve tracer IT1121 in a real world application and that's what we're going to do so the plan is we're going to remove this power transistor from this ignition we're going to wire it into the semiconductor curve tracer. We're going to read it out on the uh, Tektronix uh, 2235. And we're going to uh, uh, increase the load on here. I'm going to pull the data sheet for this to make sure it stays within the appropriate range. And we're going to see if the transistor starts to fail. If it does, we know we have a transistor with an intermittent problem. You can replace the transistor and that will solve for the issue. As it turns out, it looks like the transistor is not socketed. Uh, it is soldered in there. So I'm gonna have to desolder the wires from these connectors. That is shoddy. So we can see that I have the machine up and running. I am currently testing this transistor here. Uh, I generally test the machine, make sure everything's operating okay with uh, one of these um, transistors that I have a, a ton of. They're of no value and make sure that it's okay before I actually put the test device on the unit just in case I have something set wrong and I blow it up. This test will be using the Frank Perez uh, transistor testing cables which were given to me uh, for completing the semiconductor curve tester project last year. Thank you Frank. It's also important to check and make sure that the uh, pinout is correct. Uh, I looked at one data sheet and then another data sheet and they were conflicting uh, so I went with the older data sheet, of course, which was different and trying extremely low voltage. I saw that the curve did turn out to match the one on the data sheet. Seemed like the safe bet and sure enough, it seemed to be okay. You know, I got to thinking as I was doing this, this is an interesting transistor numbering scheme for an Eastern Bloc country at the time. And as I'm doing this, I'm saying to myself, I'm going to imagine that this uh, Western style transistor is probably not original to the device. I'm gonna have to figure out uh, what type of transistor originally went in here, because clearly this wasn't it. I also have to wonder if having the wrong transistor in here led to the problems anyway. I'm going to uh, test this transistor, of course, but um, yeah, I'm wondering if that may be causing an issue as well. This transistor may be fine, but being the wrong transistor may be an issue. Also, doing a little reading online, I found that there's three generations of uh, ignition systems for this type of uh, setup, and this is the oldest one. This is also the most problematic, and a lot of people say that if you have this one to go to a more modern setup, uh, as these are, um, yeah, they're just either broken or on their way out. I'm not gonna give up on this one. I'm gonna clean it up. We're gonna do some testing anyway, and I'm gonna give it back to Jason after I test this uh, transistor, but there's no reason to stop just because they uh, they have a uh, um, propensity for failure. So let's bring it up on 60 volts and see what we have. There's 10, 
20, 30. And this transistor appears to be running fine. This is about uh, 60 volts right now. We can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And looking up here, the steps are on the vertical. We're looking at 200 milliamps per division, two, four, six, eight, and that's uh, one amp. And then just around there, we so we could see that, that this is operating uh, well. It's getting a little warm. Turn it down a bit. So we were we were watching it get get a little bit hot because there's no heat sink. So we were watching some the characteristics change on camera. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dial that back a bit. Uh, when they talk about the operating characteristics of these um, uh, transistors, they're assuming that it has adequate cooling to run it at full tilt. And I do not. So I can only run it for a very short amount of time at 60. I've dialed it back now. You can see the 30. Um, that being said, you see even even 30 there we're seeing. Let me drop that back down a little there. The takeaway is that there is nothing wrong with this transistor. After some badly needed deoxit, I was able to finally measure the black connector here to the plug wire is 4.4K and the red to the plug wire is 1.3 meg and these terminals were in some bad condition right over here and you can see they're looking better now. Black to yellow climbs on the resistance test. It tells me that there's some sort of capacitor sitting in between there. And I've got nothing from yellow to red or yellow to the front coil. I'll assume that that's by design. So the problem may just come down to being the wrong transistor. Now I have been able to source the original transistor for this unit on eBay and it's only a couple of dollars. However, uh, in looking at different web pages on the internet, this particular uh, model of coil the 306 500, uh, it doesn't bode well. Uh, people talk about it being miraculous if this particular uh, coil still works anymore. And most people who still have these bikes have already upgraded to a more modern coil, a second and third generation coil to replace this as it is uh, easily prone to failure. So yeah. A $2 uh, investment is a small gamble. It could get this working or it could simply replace this in the stator and call it a day. So this is my video for the Transimo 306-500 coil testing and troubleshooting for the Jawa 40. Thanks for watching.